Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. I'm The Gerbil. Today's video is all about the new Conquest 14, the data mine feats, the teams I'm going to be using, some of the tips that I've discovered along the way. And while I know that there are a lot of great resources out there, I hope you stick around. And I've got a few tricks up my sleeve that I actually don't hear anybody else talking about. Maybe they'll work for you. But simply put, I think that this Conquest 14 is going to be rather easy. There are some teams that can triple even quadruple dip into feats, meaning that one battle can apply towards as many as four different feats. So let's get started. I'm going to walk through the global, each of the sectors. I'm going to showcase some like power teams, if you will, as well as point out some synergies and uh, mostly team leaders, but also some actual teams. So here we go. First thing, the global feat. Okay, now I'm not going to get into data discs, but what we know so far is that Zealous Ambition and Vitality are back. Normally, Vitality, it doesn't really matter too much, gives you some survivability. But when coupled with Zealous Ambition, healers and support units become your hardest hitting units. I know that sounds really weird. It's not always true. But just case in point, I can get Barris Ophi hitting for two to 400,000 damage on a basic. I can get Ewok Elder hitting for more than gas at Relic 8. It's not hard if you have Zealous Ambition and Vitality. And the Vitality keeps you alive, and then those healers and supports start racking up damage rapidly. So if you run across this, bear in mind that a lot of the team recommendations I'm going to give throughout here are going to either really, really, really want those zealous ambitions or really, really not want them. <laughs> so let's let's explore this. So first off, defeat 250 enemies, enough said, do that. Defeat 600 B1 battle droids, that likely means stacks of B1s. Be aware that like if it's on a Grievous team, he's gonna do a lot of damage to his own battle droid. And there could be some other mechanics happening in there that I, like, who knows if like burn is going to apply damage over time or anything like that so it might only be counting stacks that you directly deal damage to and it looks like from the data mine thank you so much everybody over the discord event server and and everybody else who's out there collecting this stuff um it looks like there will be a gg b1 battle droid boss node i think on sector four so that may be a reliable place to go in and kill b1s but we don't yet know um moving on though when 40 battles with a full squad of Galactic Republic. Now, if you're reading across my table here where I've scraped the, the screenshots, um, these are leaders of teams that will be highly effective. 501st under Gas, Jedi Master Kenobi. Be aware that Cat, she's not a Jedi. So there are some times where you will be wanting to use Cat in a Kenobi team and you're gonna want to make sure you pull her out. Um, Padme, uh, Padme's squad, uh, Take your pick. Kellerum back lead and Qui-Gon Jinn lead are going to make some really useful Jedi squads. And of course, Bad Batch is Galactic Republic 2. So, uh, win 20 battles with Kellerum back and Grogu. That's pretty straightforward. Nothing to say there. Win with 20, uh, 20 battles with light side Mandalorians surviving. Now, this can be really, really problematic for a lot of mid gamers and early accounts. Uh, Bo Katan is probably going to be your leading character. You're going to want to put in, uh, obviously, whatever Mandalorian light side you have, but I think that. The armor is going to be super incredibly useful. If you jump down to the bottom right of the screen, you'll see there's Bo-Katan, both of the Mandalorians, Sabine, and Armor. So Armor is going to be very instrumental in keeping your team alive with her armor that she applies. And Sabine and her both also have a uh, armor shred, which is going to be important for Sector 1. So you probably want to try to get your light side Mandos out of the way in Sector 1, and we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, also, 501st is going to be useful in for the armor shred with gas but he's going to kill people pretty quickly so you're not likely to get a lot of those happening and then i said the qui-gon Jin and kellerum beck leads those are going to be really really useful and we're going to talk a lot more about those in a second now into the uh back to the mandalorians though you're only going to get one key card for achieving all 20 battles yeah i know but that's going to unlock the overpower over prepared uh, data disc you got to use it once that's it um and complete a battle and you'll get 15 points for 
that. I think that this will be a pretty easy feat overall to, to cheese the Light Side Mandalorians, especially if you have a decently modded uh, pair of Mandalorians. Uh, the Beskar one, of course, is going to allow you to put healing or damage immunity on your team as they start to take damage. So if you get the right data discs, um, I think that this will not be too hard. Now into the yellow, defeat 50 enemies with stab. I actually don't think this is going to be as challenging as it seems. There are a couple of different ways that you can go about it. Of course, a, a stock GG team. The problem is that you're going to lose a lot of kills that are going to get sniped off by B1. So you might want to take B1 out of the battle. I, I need to go back and reread Stapp's kit, which I will do later and make a video specifically about that. But I don't think that that's going to be as hard as it looks. And then when you get those 50 kills with Stapp, you'll unlock Booming Voice. Attempt to call all allies to assist with Booming Voice 60 times, and that is actually going to be really, really easy to do. Uh, if you put in a squad against a fairly weak enemy with uh, somebody um, like like Maul, for example, can can every time he uses his ability, he will trigger the Booming Voice. So you can go just like boom, 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 boom six uh, attacks, and you're going to get four allies assisting each time, so it's 24 assists right there um or instances of booming voice so i think i think that like ah look at this i'm bleeding i'm bleeding i cut myself also if you put in like a watt tambor with the though the, i think it's a weapon tech that gives them a uh, turn meter every time an enemy takes a turn uh, that'll work or you put in a squad with like thrawn to pass turn meter Jin urza to pass turn meter so that you can just you know keep taking a lot of turns you can probably knock that out in just a couple of battles all right sector one all right here's where this stuff really starts to get juicy keep in mind vitality zealous ambition is what i'm thinking about the whole time so uh you'll notice i'm not going to necessarily read all of this but check out you'll see that there are some underlying things in green some characters outlined in green and then down below uh at the bottom corner directly below me it says all jedi that's all jedi related so you need 50 defeat 50 enemies with jedi well that's pretty easy and that can double down on a global uh, feat with the Galactic Republic. So if you make a Galactic Republic squad using all Jedi, for example, Kenobi, Gas, General Kenobi, Shock T, Barris, you'll get the Galactic Republic feat point. You'll get an all Jedi points towards the enemies defeating. Um, but at, at the same time, you can also get armor shreds if you put in, say, cam and or uh, gas. So you need 30 armor shreds. Well, you can get you can get those, right? So you can get Armor Shred, you can get Jedi, you can get Galactic Republic all out of the one squad. Now the easier Armor Shred though will be with those Light Side Mandalorians. Sabine's cooldown on her Armor Shred ability is two. So if you can put like Watt Tech, if you don't, if you know, if you're not chasing the Mandos, put Watt Tech again, put Thrawn in there, put Jin in there to pass turn back and forth. Uh, if we get the deployable cooling systems, put in Grandmaster Yoda and she can do it then every single turn. Uh, if you don't know how that works, hit me up in Discord or the comments or just search deployable cooling. Uh, there's a great cheese effect. Now gains Intel secret intel 80 times that's only viable as far as i know with bb8 so i would pair bb8 with general grievous and stap so that you can double down on the secret intel and stap kills at the same time um, i think that's that's going to be annoying but very doable now throughout the entire conquest as always we have win with somebody surviving in every sector uh, here we got two of them hermit yona t3 m4 Later on, it's going to be like fives, and then it's it's a bunch of different people. The reality is you can do that even with gear one, level one, two, three star characters. A great way to cheese those, uh, those, those win with someone surviving is to revive them just before the battle is over. Great ways to do that is with characters like Adrad. If you reserve the hope mechanic until the very end of the battle, it will revive all all allies regardless of faction regardless of light side dark side so you can revive hermit yoda you can revive t3 or you can throw an ewok elder who has two revival mechanics honestly is a way better reviving character than captain han that for some reason people always recommend captain han's revive is like seven or like the cooldown is like six or seven it's it's really really high ewok elders i think is three 
and he's got two of them. So a double revival mechanic, and they are not dependent on being Ewoks. They can be any faction, light side, dark side. All right, so those are gonna be some really, really great tips there. Now, in sector two, Again, we got some color coding here. So the text at the bottom is color coded to match. So let's just quickly skim this. We got 14 battles. You got to win with no attackers. You got to evade 100 attacks. You've got to attempt to inflict plague 400 times. And you've got to gain health steal up 60 times. Now, there is some really cool triple dipping here. So no attackers. I would recommend a Palpatine lead or a Grandmaster Yoda lead. Seriously potentially also a Padme, both GMY and Padme are gonna get you the global sector fee, Galactic Republic. Imperial Troopers is always a great fallback. If you have an Imperial Trooper squad, just make sure you take out Death Troop, not Death, Dark or Death Trooper, right? You don't want either of them. But what's up with GMY? Well, again, check out the very bottom power team. GMY with, uh, take your pick of four additional Jedi, just make sure none are attackers. And I would recommend visas in there. Why? Because you're gonna have no attackers first off. Uh, GMY is going to spread around all the buffs and uh, he's going to spread around uh, foresight. So your whole team is gonna have opportunities for evading. And then visas has an AOE ally health steal up ability that GMY is going to spread as well. Now, realistically, you could put in Kenobi lead, you could put in a bunch of different leads there. It doesn't really matter, but um, that squad right there is going to give you the uh, the no attackers, the health steal up, and the evades up all in one go. Moving to the other power team there, we got Palpatine with GMY, Hermit Yoda, Visas again, and Thrawn. Similarly, we have no attackers, and then you've got an AoE Foresight uh, from Yoda, and that's going to get spread around as well. Then you're going to get AoE Health Steal up again from both Palpatine now and Visas. So Palp says, hey, here's five stacks. Visa says, here's another five stacks. Yoda's like, hey, spread that around. There's another five stacks or whatever. And then Thrawn's like, hey, who wants an extra turn? So Thrawn is there just to add extra turns. But bear in mind, what did we say about Zealous Ambition? Thrawn is a support character. GMY is a support character. Visas is a healer. Shakti is a support. Bears is a healer. Uh, Palpatine's a support. They are all going to be doing insane amounts of damage, way better than your attackers. You're not going to need Star Killer in here. You're not going to need any attackers, Darth Vader. You you will not need them if you get Vitalities and Zealous Ambitions to rock out. Now. If you really, really want to just try to cheese out the evade as quickly as possible, consider a full Galactic Republic squad under Qui-Gon or Beck lead. Both of them have a similar mechanic, though Qui-Gon's is a little better. Qui-Gon's and Beck both give all allies two stack, or sorry, foresight for two turns at the start of the battle. So that immediately off the get-go is five opportunities to evade. So if your opponents do a lot of AoEs, then there's five instances of evade right from the start. Qui-Gon is kind of nicer though for this because whenever an enemy or a unit is defeated, I think it's when any enemy is defeated, uh, yeah, when any enemy is defeated, he's going to reapply that foresight to the whole team. So as you take out the bad guys, you're going to just automatically get more foresight. So that's going to be pretty nice. Once again, you got to have five survive. Fives, if you are going to struggle with that, especially since he sacks, although if he sacrifices, I don't think he can be revived. So watch out for that. Got to check the kit. But again, you can cheese that a whole bunch of different ways. Recommend again, Radis, Ewok Elder. And if not, then Visas, who I'm already recommending below. And of course, Vet Han. Now, a quick word, uh, word about the win without a Jedi, Sith, or unaligned Force users. Radis again, works right there. So you can cheese that. Dash with Scoundrels, Imperial Troopers with no attack. Hackers. Um, that's a good one. And then Jabba the Hutt is not, he's not unaligned. He's not a Ufu, he's not a Jedi, he's not a Sith. And you can put any bounty hunters you want in there, including Cad Bane, Ara Singh, and get the double feat for the boss node in one battle. So that would be really smooth. All right, Sector 3. We've got uh, defeat 50 enemies with droid units. We'll come back to that. Uh, gain momentum a thousand times, which is strictly going to be done with Tuscans. Good luck. Attempt to inflict purge 300 times. A note on the purge. It's straightforward. You got to have Inquisitors. Your ideal lineup is going to be Reva, um, but you're going to want to take out, honestly, Grand Inquisitor 
Why? As an attacker who tripled hits on basic and then who applies torture, you're likely to kill your opponents very quickly. And we don't want to do that when you're trying to get 300 stacks of purge. What you want to do is apply the purge, consume the purge, reapply the purge, consume the purge, reapply the purge. So Grand Inquisitor, while he can um, consume them with his second ability, it's going to kill people quickly, ending the battle, and you're going to need more battles. So take out GI, put in Ninth Sister. She has a great first special ability that consumes up to five stacks i think maybe even all six stacks of purge and then removes buffs from the enemy based on that fifth brother is a great special to consume stacks of purge seven sisters aoe not aoe yeah it's an it's a ally team heal will remove stacks of purge and the ninth sister her first set special will consume, I think, all stacks of Purge. Just don't use her second special as you don't want to delete the enemies. You just want to consume those stacks and then basic, restore the stacks, right? Gain Foresight 300 times. Kaloran back, Kaloran back, Qui-Gon Jinn, Qui-Gon Jinn, Yodas. That's the way that one's going to go down. Um, but if you don't put in Hermit, you can again get Global Galactic Republic stacks, um, feats out of this one. Um, so now then, power teams. So... General Grievous, Stap, R2, BV-8, Sortie. Seriously. First off, it's all droids. So you'll get the 50 kills with droids pretty quickly. Secondly, you need Stap kills for the global feat. Third, uh, R2-D2 has an AoE burn. Not a big deal, but he's a support. So if you land two or three Zealous Ambitions, that AoE sub burn could kill everyone. Just keep that in mind, even if you're going to use him like in a C uh, CLS squad with... Uh, Chupio, who's also a droid, his AoE can knock out the whole enemy team if you line it up right. But in addition, R2-D2 gives Foresight, and he's going to put your whole team in Stealth. Stealth isn't going to matter so much, except that the Foresight does. Um, you get the Foresight from there. BB-8 is going to get a Foresight, I think, whenever he's critically hit. So you can actually put everyone in Stealth except for BB-8. They target BB-8. You get another Foresight. And then uh, Sorty has... I think Sorty has a, a Foresight mechanic also, though I didn't indicate that there. So Foresight from three characters, stab kills, and then all droid kills yeah so we're hitting at least three feats in one go now the the jedi here qui-gon and then take your pick of healers with support units you um qui-gon's going to spread around foresight r2d2 is going to give one foresight and gmy is going to spread around foresight so you'll get the foresights really really fast and again vitality and zealous ambition is what you want out of this sector four defeat 50 enemies with imperial troopers it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Veers troopers or Iden troopers uh, attempt to inflict ability block 60 times. Now, you can probably get that all in one battle with Jedi Master Luke and then probably old, uh, old Ben, Rolo, um, Cassian, and maybe like Watt to speed someone up or Thrawn or Jenners at a pass to turn meter around. However, if you can manage to do it with Vitality again and Zealous Ambitions, you can just build a squad with Old Ben, Rolo, Cassian, Kyle Katarn, and Captain Drogon, and you'll still probably be able to get all 60 of those in one battle, or two if you have to. But what's nice about that is if you skip down two lines, we have to win 14 battles with all Rebels, and those people I mentioned were all Rebels. Pretty nice. Now, gain stealth 120 times. You can take out one of them, like maybe Drogon, if you don't want to kill the enemies too fast. Put in R2-D2. Every time he does his little whirly dust thing, you're going to put four allies in stealth, so you'll get the stealths out of that. Uh, and you're still getting all rebels, and um, you're still getting ability blocks out of, like, old Ben Rolo. And then the last one, oh, so yeah, so the boss sectors are going to be pretty straightforward. Not a lot to say there, except for the main boss, win with only light side. Try to hit that with rebels. Uh, CLS if you need the power, or Leia if you need even more power. But once again, if you can manage this with healer supports and tanks and zealous ambitions, you can triple down on one of these. So power squad, CLS, R2, C3PO, Old Ben, Kyle. Kyle has the ability block on his basic 
old Ben, so you want to use his basic as much as you can, call him to assist with C-3PO. Uh, old Ben has an AOE ability block, uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO have stealth mechanics. Um, so there's a lot you can do there to get both the Rebel only, the ability block, and the win with Jet, uh, sorry, Rebels. So three, three opportunities there. Now the 120 stealth, if you really want to have fun with this, you can do this in one battle, very easy with a Tebow lead. Yeah, not kidding. So Tebow's leadership says uh, allies have a 55% chance to gain stealth for one turn at the beginning of their battle. Or their turn, sorry. So basically what you want to do is you want to pass some protection, the, the stacks of Beskar or whatever, onto Sith Eternal if you got him, so that he gains the critical hit avoidance, he gains the, the protection recovery, the defense, whatever it is. I don't remember, but it but it, it's good. You want the stacks of Beskar. Then you want the tank tech, so that every time he takes a turn, he recovers more protection. And then once you got that, you just auto basic. And what'll happen is Kyle will attack, and I Kyle will attack, on his basic, he will apply ability block. Cool, we need that. Then uh, Tebow can die, Watt can die, Armor can die, does not matter. But Sith Eternal is just gonna basic, basic, basic. And if you pick the right opponent, you're never going to die. And what'll happen is Sith Eternal, every turn, uh, he has a 55% chance to gain stealth. So basically every other turn, he's gonna gain stealth. So if you can do this on one of the boss nodes and just go auto basic, um, walk away for 10 minutes, come back, and you you will likely have the 120 stealths in one battle. So that'll be pretty, pretty suave. All right, final sector, boys and girls. If you're still with me, I applaud you. Hit that like and subscribe, please, please, please. I appreciate it. Win 50 battles, or no, defeat 50 enemies with Inquisitors. Yeah, mm-hmm. You'll notice I didn't put Reva there. Reva, you do not want to use Reva or Ninth Sister in the uh, Sector 5. Why? Because the very next feat says, win 14 battles with no tanks. And sadly, Reva is a tank. So, no take out Reva. You don't want Reva in there. No tanks is pretty easy to achieve given a lot of what we've already discussed. CLS with Chupio, you're gonna want Chupio um, for a bunch of reasons. We'll get more on that in a second. Uh, Imperial Troopers, Veers is gonna be easy to achieve. Jabba the Hutt is gonna be easy. Padme is gonna be easy to do this with. Again, Zealous Ambition. Rely on your supports and healers and you will decimate. All right, attempt to inflict blind 80 times. Saw Gerrera and Chupio both have an AOE blind mechanic. Jabba the Hutt has blind on basic. So that's gonna go ahead and move us down into evasion, the fourth and final feat, which is gonna be really easy because Chupio applies evasion on basic. Chrysanthemum applies a evade on basic. Old Ben applies evade on basic. And if you're into the spreading of AOE uh, evasion downs, Baslishan, uh, Zam, and Kyle, uh, not Kyle, uh, Cal, all have uh, ways to apply evasion through AOE, but it's less effective than just the basics for a couple reasons. So let's jump down now to the power teams. CLS or Jin, who would actually be better, but most of us aren't going to have, most people won't have Jin at this level to use, but CLS with Chupio. Remember, every time a rebel uses any ability, Chupio is going to assist. Every time he assists, he's using his basic. Every time he uses his basic, you're hopefully applying evasion down. So you're going to knock this out in just a couple of battles real fast. Evasion down, check, done. Saw Guerrera is there for the AoE blind, as is Chupio. So maybe two battles, check. Uh, C3PO is going to do C3PO stuff. And Jabba the Hutt is going to apply blind also on basic, and he's just a big fella. You don't really need him there, but if you want, you can get no tanks, a, uh, blind, and evasion down, probably in two battles to get uh, most of that done. So that'll be pretty simple. Now, an alternative is Palpatine lead with Basil Shan, Sith Assassin, 8th brother, Thrawn. Look at the awesomeness here. No tanks, Vitality, Zealous Ambition, thank you very much. Evasion down on Sith Assassin's basic, cool. Basil of Shan has a uh, Fallen has an AOE evasion down, cool. Technically it's not, it's like when like fear expires or something that it gets applied, but whatever, you know what I mean. 
AoE blind on 8th brother, so you'll spam his special AoE as much as possible, but note it's only against Jedi, so find yourself a Jedi squad that you can go play with. And then you will get Inquisitor kills if you line it up right by having uh, eighth brother make the kills for you. So all four sector five feats are viable from this one squad. Why Thrawn? Why not? He's a support unit. So if you need more damage output, zealous ambition, thank you. He can fracture an enemy that's in your way, of course, and he can pass turn meter, right? So that maybe Palp does his AOE. Um, no, no, let's not say Palp, for example. Let's say uh, eighth brother does his AOE to apply evasion down. Uh, what is it? Blind on all Jedis. And then Thrawn takes a turn. Eighth Brother takes another turn, right? That way you drop your cooldowns quicker so that you can do those AoEs and, and whatever you need to even quicker. The CLS route is going to be way more efficient, um, but I know a lot of people may not have Java, you may not have Saw, whatever. So maybe you have this team good to go. So anyway, folks, this is my plan so far. It will evolve as we go on. Uh, let me know what you think. If you think I got something wrong, if you got a tip to add on top of this, hit me up in Discord or, or you know, put it in the description down below. But please don't leave till you hit the like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.